There, Maxwell and Boomba will tap it up there. Of course, Boomba, he's got the bright orange shoes on, as does LJ Coward. And uh, see if Georgetown get Hugo Boomba into the scoring column early in this one. Been a tough go of him for him the last few weeks. He's kind of fallen out of the rotation as Georgetown's played a more spread lineup. And life begins with the opening possession. Inside, Horton challenged at the rim. No good. And Boomba off of his foot over to Rade Kukabot. And Georgetown will come down for the first time offensively. Coward gets a screen from Kukabot. Now the pick and pop game. Boomba wants Got it down he. low. Couldn't get it inside. Those match up with Label. Coward. Uh, he, he had him stuck, and he should have. They should have gotten him the ball quicker, but they didn't do it. Coward, little fancy ball handling. Boomba sets a nice screen now of the Conway off the curl through the lane. Conway with the left hand, no good. Kukabot put back jam, and that's a good way to start senior day. It is for for Rade, but Jacobs got to finish that. He got around the corner. Just didn't put the ball up on the glass high enough. Conway had a nice bounce back game on Thursday and did it by getting to the rim. Had a, several key offensive rebounds in that one. Couldn't finish the lay in that time. As Georgetown has the opening basket one minute in. This is Hernandez working against Kukabot. Now they switch to Horton. Now the label in the corner. Coffee checks in with the left hand. Pull up from 15. Off the iron and Boomba with the board. Georgetown, of course, they want to play at an up-tempo pace. The Tigers average 94 points per game. Life will try and choke it down whenever they can. And a foul called this side as Coffey took a forearm in the back. Actually, he said a knee. James Label gets called for the foul. Whatever it was, he couldn't. he's not supposed to be doing it. Coward checked by Horton. Kukabot in the corner, shot fake. Working on Hernandez, back out to Coward. Got time Horton. on the shot clock. Got the crossover, over to Kukabot. He wants a three. Bingo. Good start for Rade Kukabot. He has really been struggling. Just 18 points over his last six games. He has the first five here tonight. Assist to LJ Coward. That's 649 in the career. 5 nothing in favor of the Tigers. Gamble to answer. Got it. Can't go underneath the screen on Gamble. you got to get over the top and stay in his hip pocket and run him off the line. One week ago, he put six threes down against Cumberland. That was the 64th of the year to get the running Eagles on the board. Like life now, a bit of a zone oh, nice here. Nice look again. Kukovat off the iron. Boomba, weak side, battling for it, lost it. Coffee eventually gathers, though. Behind the back to Conway. Oh, I thought he was going to fire. He, well, if he had been ready to shoot when Conway did the little no-look flip, he would have. Kukovat lost it on the roll, got it back. Eventually down to Hernandez on the floor. He eventually shovels it back to Horton, who collides with Gamble, and it goes over to Georgetown. What a sequence that was. Mike White into the game now for life, taking the place of Hernandez. White, a 6'3 junior of College Park, Georgia. He scored 39 over his last three. The life coaching staff telling his ball club, slow down. We don't want to run with Georgetown. That's their only chance here today, in theory, is it not, to slow the game down? Well, normally when life came in here in the happy Osborne days, in the early days of Chris Briggs, no. Now, yes. When you have trouble scoring the basketball, you don't want to get in the running game with the Tigers. Conway, bounce feed inside. There is Boomba. Nice feed from Jacob Conway from the top. And Hugo Boomba on the board, 7-3 in favor of Georgetown. Well, Boomba sat down in the post and a great pass from Conway leading him to the rim. Three minutes in to the top. Antoine Maxwell wants a three off the iron. Chris Coffey has the rebound. He's the, he's the best in America at that. Coward right by Gamble all the way to the rim. And a timeout for life. Well, they're trying to shoot quickly. And if you're life, you don't want your post player hoisting up a three. Jack, when he was here with Lindsey Wilson, just out in the hallway, just kind of making small talk with him. I said, what are you trying to do, coach every team within the Mid-South Conference? He's been at three in the last couple of years. Yes, he has. 9-3 in favor of Georgetown as we're back to action with Maxwell at the top, handing off to White. Got Gamble. Conway now on Gamble. Now Maxwell. Maybe a better matchup here for life. Maxwell's going to take a fallaway jumper. I'm surprised he didn't try to back his way down there. White inside. And they'll say he played it off the knee of Boomba. And I think it said Boomba might have had a foot on the end line well, when the play was they're, made. They're saying that, but here's the thing. I thought it hit the life player out of bounds, but whatever the official told Chris Briggs, Briggs said okay to it. Uh, of course, remember a week ago in that two-point loss to Campbellsville, Chris Briggs got teed up. 
It was darn near on, run because he call. really lost yeah, it. He, he yep. nearly got ejected in that game. Those two points at the technical free throws wound up being the difference. Conway checking Gamble at the top. Around the screen, now rolling baseline. Libel looked like he wanted to dunk it. At the last second, he was challenged by Coffee and tried to guide it in off the glass. Conway contested Short. three, not a good shot at all. Not in that point. Maxwell had the rebound, now to Gamble. Antoine Maxwell, fourth in the Mid-South Conference with eight double-doubles. His first rebound tonight. Here he is against Boomba. Two similar bodies here. Going to be harder for him to back down Boomba than Kukabot there. Gets space, though. Hits the turnaround jumper. Well, Boomba's got to stand his ground a little bit more solidly. That way when Maxwell lowers his shoulder to make it an easier call for the guy in the stripes. Life stays in the zone. George Jones is been kind of hot and cold from three-point range over the last couple of weeks. It's not a bad idea. Conway, touch pass, coffee dunk. Well, that was a lucky break for Georgetown. Conway lost it and then didn't even try to grab it, just tipped it to coffee for the jam. Coffee loves that short corner, runs that baseline, and has his first points of the day. 11-5 to five in favor of Georgetown. Gamble, wow. Tell you what. He's the one guy. Well, you can't let him get his feet set and walk into it. And Jacob, I think he's got a bigger build. He's 6'5". Gamble goes, what, 6'2"? Yes. Be physical with him. Get up in his grill. Gamble did not score in the first game between these two. Was 0 for 4 from the field. He's hit two threes early to keep life within reach. Five minutes in. Coward lost on the drive and eventually found its way to White. That was a hard pass for Coffee to deal with. That was a howitzer thrown from about six feet away. Same time zone defense also give Georgetown trouble, especially to, kind of takes L.J. Coward off his rhythm a little bit as he likes to be able to drive and penetrate. Harder to do that against that zone. Well, Here's where ball movement's better. Yeah, Horton at the top. He'll take a three to tie it. Off the mark, Kukabot fouled from behind by White. Mike that's White's a, first team second. That's a cheap foul from White. You don't need to do that if you're White. You're one of the one player that, that they they need to produce for them. And a, a foul like that where you had no shot at getting that rebound. What a confusion as far as who was supposed to sub out. And finally, Maxwell takes a seat. Life nearly began play. There was six on the floor. Yeah, and they go smaller. Checking in is Alex Bean. Six foot eight, but just a freshman and much not much size there. Cook out of the backdoor lob. Coward on the assist. That's 650 in the career for LJ Coward. 13-8 in favor of the Tigers. Gamble with the left hand. Pass over to Libel. Back out to Hernandez. From 17. Not there. Chris Coffey says, get out of the way, Jacob. I'm the rebounder on this team. And then has something to say to his teammates to run back down the floor. Of course, that's exactly what he said. That's my, my rebound. Coward forced it inside and is fouled trying to grab it back down by Bean. And that's just LJ knew he took a bad shot there. Went back to get his offensive rebound and just outworked Bean to get inside position. Coward not ready for the inbound pass there. And finally, you got to get it in before the five count. Conway rolling to the rim. This time finishes with the left hand. Another assist to Coward. That's three. 15-8 in favor of the Tigers. Gamble. Goes back Libel. Extra pass over to Hernandez who gets a look and knocks it down. Can't Jordan be. Hernandez is 45th. Well, we gambled out at the be out at the head of the that offensive set, and that threw everything off as far as rotation was concerned for Georgetown. Coward answer three, not even close. Boomba inside gets the rebound though. Conway, give it to him. Instead, Coffee set the screen. Conway, no, do not agree with that. Coffee is fouled by Bean going for the putback attempt off of another questionable shot from Jacob Conway, and Alex Bean has just picked up his second foul. And Chris. And he went down hard there on that left hip. Actually, he came right down on his both backside parts of his anatomy. I'd say holding that left wrist, too. But if you want to foul a guy for your life, this is the one to do it. Gary Durbin, one of the officials, coming in and checking on Chris's well-being. Chris Coffey, over his last nine games, is just 6 for 21 from the foul line. Ugh. His free throw percentage now under 50%. Uh, uh, uh. 
And that's something, that get, going out to the national tournament, teams are going to see that. Teams he, that don't know what have to change. And if this does not improve, this could be a problem for Georgetown and Kansas City. The Tigers shoot just 65% as a team. But he shot much better over the course of those five games a year ago. Now six for 22 we're getting Nico in his last Clareth nine plus. He's going to come in for coffee, it looks like. Clareth wearing the long sleeves today. Cold outside. But where he's from, he should be used to the cold air. Coffee misses both. Kukabot tapped it out, but right to Horton, who's going to take it and run. No numbers for Horton. He'll stop and pop from 10 and got it. Well, right now, seven minutes, in, almost seven minutes in, you're letting life hang around. Some kind of stoppage in play shot here. Clock didn't, shot clock reset, but didn't start. So Georgetown will take it on the side inbound. They'll let Nico Clara sub into the game. Or Chris Coffey. They're going to check his. Check, see if that makes sure that left wrist is okay. I was going to say they'll check his demeanor, but that's Wait. all. Clara's off. got the long sleeves up top and down below. Yeah. I talked yeah. to him before the game today and kind of joking around, saying, oh, you're going to have a big game today. It's your final home game, right? And I said, Said how many? I asked him how many points do you think? How many points are you going for today? Give me a number. He's like, he looked at me and said, as many points as the team needs. And I said, that's a young man there who's been go. to media class right there. There you go. He has been struggling as of late from the field. Not afraid though. That shot no good. Now he is five for twenty-nine from three-point range over his last five-plus games. And Life University. 2-13 and 13 in the league right now, giving the number two team in the country all they want early. Hernandez behind the screen, good closeout by Clareth. Cuts him off at the foul line. Coward knocks it away. Hernandez did not see him. Coward through the lane and a foul called. I think they're going to get Horton with it. Yep. And instead they're going to get Gamble. I think they're going to call it on the floor too. Are they gonna, nope, they're going to call it on the shooting. Yep. Gamble's first, team's fifth. Georgetown has yet to commit a foul tw with 12.27 to go in the first half, and don't think that's not lost upon the life coaching staff. I'm going to talk to one of the assistant coaches, which is unusual. I think they're trying to say it was on the floor, if anything, not in the act of shooting. See if it stands. He said, number one, they're trying to get together. And it will stand as is. So Gamble with the foul, LJ Coward to the line. He's a 73% shooter on the year. But he, but he struggled at the foul line against Campbellsville. He did. As did all the Tigers, because I don't even, I can't remember what they shot from the foul line. It was not good. It was forgettable. Well, Kyron Jones in, Hugo Boomba. Good early minutes for Hugo Boomba. A couple of points, three rebounds, and now another stoppage. They're trying to get the, the, the assistant coach is still arguing for life about who the foul was called on. There were three guys over there. The official here on the near side is the one that made the call, and he insisted it's number one. And it looks like that's what they're going to stay as with the call on Gamble. It was, I thought it was on Horton initially. Well, they like both were in the area. And Coward hits the free throw point number four for LJ. Four-point lead for Georgetown. 12-25 remaining in the first half. Now you got LJ on Gamble. And these two teams could see each other again a week from today in the Mid-South Conference Tournament. Nice cut, nice pass, nice rejection from Nico Clareth. He got beat, so he had to make it up. Kukabai with the hot start. Now to Conway. Coward. Tyler Jones, in, by the way, too. Yes. Took the place of Boomba. Clareth working on Hernandez through the lane. Jump stop. Couldn't get it to go. Conway inside. Look what I found. And that's what he did Thursday in the win at Cumberland that made the difference late. Those type of offensive putbacks. Well, I like Nico's aggressiveness. He just couldn't finish it. That thing popped out. I thought it was on the way through the net and just all of a sudden, decided they want to take a U-turn and come back out the other side. 19-13 in favor of Georgetown already with six offensive rebounds. Gamble around the screen now gives it back to Maxwell. He'll try a three. And it's off to Mark Kukovac. Good rebound and inside. Foul on him. And they're going to get him with the discard with yep. the left hand. That is first foul of the game on Georgetown. Charge to Rade Kukovac. Jaquay Wales will check in for Georgetown on the other side of the timeout. 11.27 to go in the first half. Good action back and forth thus far. Tigers leading life 19-13 on stretch.
taken from three point from distance at least in this ball game. Got Life Wales in by the way right now too. Taking the place of Coward right now. Maxwell on the drive, falling away from Jones. Got it to go. Second time he's hit that fall away in the lane for his second basket now. Maxwell with four. Well, Kyron that way, that time gave up the lane. You cannot give up the lane. We're down around the horn on the outside. Nobody in the middle of the zone until now with Kyron Jones. Now Jaquay Wales. The zone defense has given Georgetown fits at times, and I would imagine the rest of the year they're going to see it against their future opponents. It gives them trouble just like this. Clara, step back, long, two, no good. Jones, though, with the offensive rebound. The seventh offensive rebound already for Georgetown. A rebounding margin, a problem for life. They're the worst in the Mid-South Conference at that at minus three and a half a game. Conway, inside, basket and one, and draws a second foul on Gamble. Well, here's what he did. He realized he had a mismatch on Gamble. Gamble, a slider build player than, than Conway. He motioned everybody away and then took him and just backed him down. Now, he was patient with it. He didn't go full bore into it where he knocked Gamble over and could have gotten an offensive foul himself. And then he finished through the contact. And what I liked about it, he used the left hand. Big foul there for life. Gamble now, their best three-point shooter to the bench with two fouls. And their most consistent. Well, here we go again, back to free throws again. Conway misses a free throw. Georgetown now two for five at the line. And it's guys missing free throws who shouldn't be, like Conway and Cowherd. Orton at the top. As Conway went underneath, three is no good. Coffee has the board. Life now three for seven from downtown. Coffee streaking through the lane, but no option to do anything with it. Kicks yeah. it back out to Wales. That wasn't the place to give Chris Coffee. If you're going to throw it him streaking down the lane, you throw it up to the rim. Claire, a thin rhythm. Still can't buy one, it seems. Kyron Jones, another offensive rebound. Conway in the corner working against White. He has a foul. You drive there. Kind of a jump stop there, an awkward play. Cow- Coffee really hacked from both sides. Kyron Jones saves it over to Clara. Shot clock does not reset. It's down to five. Jones, a three. Not even close and out of bounds. Well, when you hear two things. When you get out of sync offensively, when your senior leader's off on the floor with Coffee and, or excuse me, with uh, Cowherd on the bench, Jaquay is a red shirt freshman. He's got to understand, I got to get got to get us into something. Horton floating to the ba- baseline. Banker is good. Cam Horton, nice drive there. And make no mistake about it, Jaquay Wales is the point guard of the future for Georgetown, but still a lot to learn right now in his redshirt freshman year. Conway down the lane, nice drive. Jones, late whistle comes in, a foul going to be called Bean. down low, and that's three on Alex Bean. He just came off the bench. He just came back into the ball game and made a huge mistake. He's got to understand. Kyron Jones at the foul line. He, another guy like Chris Coffey, free throw percentage under 50% on the season. Jeez. If if this does not, if that does not improve, Georgetown may go home earlier than they want to out in Kansas City. That one gets the bounce. First point of the day for Kyron Jones. 22-17 Georgetown. Well, he's got a little hitch at the top of his both his jump shot and his free throw. That's got to be ironed out. Just over nine minutes remaining in the first half. Oh, wow. Horton missed Hernandez streaking to the rim. Yeah, and Libel got by with, I think, it looked like a hook with, with the leg out there on Clareth as he was trailing the offensive player off the screen. Conway after grabbing the rebound, going behind the back, going to try and spin in the lane and lay it in. I don't know if anybody in this gym thought he had that in his repertoire. I didn't. But he used the right hand too instead of the left hand and almost didn't go in. Horton at the elbow now. A little tricky time here. Now the ball thrown away, and that's going to be an over and back over to Georgetown. That's a good hustle by White because Clareth was streaking and was going to take it the other way. Yep. Third turnover for the running Eagles. Now we're going to have both point guards in together at the same time. And Conway will go out instead of Wales. 
Coward had three early assists, now returns. Out to Wales. Extra pass, Clareth. There you go. Ten-point Tiger lead. Clareth caught that one in rhythm with space and knocked it down. 49th three of the year for the Baltimore senior. Orton on the drive, kicks it out to Maxwell. Now over to White. Contested three, banked at home. That was unintentional. That thing was off right off his hand as soon as it went, hit the window, and down it goes. And he is just a 25% three-point shooter on the year. Coffee had it poked away by Horton. Otherwise, it was going to be a throwdown. Fourth turnover for the Tigers. This has not been a first half of beauty for Georgetown right now either. Boy, Jones got to get over top Maxwell, who was demanding the ball on the block. And Jones gets called for it because he could not get over the top with it. Boy, he and Maxwell just beating and banging down low. Well, so, here's the thing on that foul that with, with Kyron. You got Maxwell off the block. Don't reach. Let him catch the ball and play good yeah, you, position You defense. won. You won him off the block. Yeah, you won that battle. Yep. Maxwell v. Jones again. Now Hernandez out the libel. Gets a screen. Nearly lost it and got it back. Now Maxwell on coffee. He'll take the jumper and knock it down. With a hand in his face. That's all right. You'll take that. 27-22. So five straight now for oh. life. And now a bad pass from Coward. And White the other way will throw it down. A lazy pass from LJ Coward. And life is right back in the game with a 7-0 run. Well, here's the thing. You cannot be lazy. Not at this level. Yeah, life may be 3-12 in the conference. But guess what? They play this game just like you do. Nope. Lareth not even close. And Horton has the board. And right now life has momentum. Georgetown is settling now for one pass and a shot. Label. Now to Get Hernandez. over top. Get open. Maxwell v. Jones. Who wins this round? Maxwell going to be fouled on the floor by Jones, and that's two on Kyron Jones. Well, here's what you do if you're Kyron. Kyron, you got him. You are trying to deny not denying the ball, but you're getting caught behind. So when he catches the ball off the post, play him straight up. Let him shoot the follow If he hits the follow that's a low percentage. If he's taking the follow jump shot, that is a low percentage shot. He checks out. Roddy Kukaba checks in. Does Speaking of Kyron Jones. Hernandez, three for the tie. No. Chris Coffey with it. Life on a 7-0 run after Georgetown briefly had a 10-point lead. Coward through the lane. Got it to go. Nice drive from LJ Coward. Took Horton all the way to the 10. Coward now with six. Horton going to try and answer with the blow by, but missed the lay in. Well, he left Coward nailed to the floor. Conway on the baseline. Euro step through, lays it in. Conway now with 10. Ibo at the top. Maxwell now. Working against Kukabot, fall away from 15. Left that one short. Clareth has it. Maxwell down and a bad pass from Clareth. Georgetown had four on two ahead, and Clareth threw it away. Georgetown's sixth turnover. Well, I think Conway thought he was going to give it up to, to Cowherd. But don't assume anything, because you, where you like to get out and run, he may, you know, you got three guards on the floor. Hernandez, working it back to Maxwell. Steps into a three, knocks it down. Has something to say to somebody in the front row for Georgetown, but you know what? Still, that's where life, see, this is where the opposing teams get caught up. Campbellsville was fortunate enough to get out here with a win last week. You don't want to get caught up talking to the crowd. Well, this is once again, though, another first half where a, an opponent is lighting up Georgetown from the outside. Coffee going to try and stop the run with Maxwell, lays it in, and the foul. I don't know how he got the angle there, but Maxwell commits his first foul. Life came into today as a 31% three-point shooting team. They are 5 for 11 here in the first half, but Chris Coffey trying to put an end to that run. He'll be at the free throw line on the other side of the break. Georgetown leading by six, five minutes to go. In Campbell. And if you don't sit here and, and try that, 
then you get that other situation at where you, you get your best, more most consistent three-point shooter. Okay, Coach uh, Official Gary Durbin talking to LJ and to Maxwell, and you know what? <laughs> I think LJ's doing his natural talking, and Maxwell was buying into it and got a little well, heated with him. Gary Durbin's going to win that conversation 10 out of 10 oh, yeah. times. Oh, yeah, but I'm just saying LJ was probably doing a little chat, and Coffee Maxwell get... bit into it and got yep. a little heated with him. Coffee converts the three-point play this time. 34-27 Tigers lead as we go under the five-minute mark in the first half. Gamble on the screen. Boy, if he kept rolling to the rim, he had an easy layup. Instead, he drops off for a three that's no good. Conway has his third board. Boy, LJ got lucky there. He, he tried to beat Gamble to the spot on a backdoor cut, but Coffey didn't help his point guard out at all. Kukabot, three. Nope. Not a good shot. We get that shot way too early in the shot clock. We can get that when the shot clock's running out. Saw Georgetown there initially have Coward matched up on Gamble. I'm surprised the Tigers didn't switch and try and go that way and get Gamble's third foul. Good closeout by Conway on White. Now back to Gamble, shot clock under 15. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you, you know, you got, we, we get that three-point fall away at any point in time. Maxwell somehow got it over to Libel, and he was able to lay it in off the glass. I don't think, I don't think Maxwell was intending to pass, and I think he was trying to go up with it. He just lost it and happened to find his teammate. Libel's first basket, 34-29, 3.50 to go in the half. 2-3 zone with Gamble at the bottom of this zone. Trying to hide him in that corner. Don't want, to, don't want him to pick up that third foul. Kukabot flashing through the middle. Coward finds an extra pass out to Wales. Three ball, no good. Coffey there on the weak side. And a and foul Gamble called on Gamble. got his third. Grab the arm of Coffey, and that is a huge one for life. That's a huge gamble. A huge gamble. You tried to put him in the corner of that zone to really try and hide yeah. him. And on the weak side there, that's where Chris Coffey lives. And Gamble hooked the arm, and now he'll have to sit the rest of the half. Hernandez will take his place. Chris Coffey will go to the line. Life bench pointing out to the officiating crew. It's 9-3 fouls in favor of Life. But to be honest with you, Georgetown has been more aggressive going into the lane. And usually that is the team that is rewarded. Usually, not all the time. Georgetown has nine offensive rebounds in the first half. Life has nine total rebounds. Oof. There's your story. Coffee goes two for two. Notice he took a step back off the line that time. Even further than he was before. And knocked them both down. Yeah. Georgetown struggling from the outside, but they are 12 of 15 inside three-point range in this first half. Big reason why they lead by seven with 325 to go. White, quick three, no. Coffee has his seventh board. Yeah, that wasn't even close. Coward. Nice pass to Conway, tried to catch it with one hand and dribbled it all the end line over to Life. That was a tough pass from LJ to, to Jacob and yeah. catching one down in that area, you got a two-handed. Yeah, Coffey was, or excuse me, Cal Conway was trying to grab that with one hand and kind of scoot, guide it to the basket all in one motion. Three minutes to go in the half. Life continues to hang around. Boomba drove Maxwell off the block. What does Maxwell do to counter? And Hugo Boomba forces a travel. Can't defend it any better than that. And that's a good teaching point, I think, right there for Kyron Jones, too, to learn from the senior Hugo Boomba. If he wants to step out, just go right with him. As you said, play him straight. Coach Easley trying to say that Boomba grabbed the hand of Maxwell. I didn't see that. All I saw was him trying to spin and do some fancy dribbling and got caught. Shelf on the feet. Kukovat, that's too easy. He came from the wing on that. That's usually a baseline move. He came all the way from the free throw line and extended. I mean, what do we see at times the Georgetown women struggle with in that zone defense? Communication, there was none there from life. 38-29, Georgetown with the lead. Here is Horton stepping into a three as Coward gave him room. Nearly banked it home. Boomba with the board. Georgetown with one of its bigger lineups of the season on the floor right now. Coward to Kukabot. He's had a nice first half with nine points. Coward, baseline to Coffey. Bad pass. Co Coward tracks it down, though. Coffey was thinking about what he was going to do to dunk and posterize somebody instead of catching the ball. Coward, three. Good, and he knew it. 
timeout life. 41-29, Georgetown has its largest lead. Coach Easley still tell, still talking about the fouls, and the officials have let him let him go about as far. But you got to look and think, hey, you know, Georgetown is 3 for 14 from behind the arc. They've turned the ball over seven times. We have two offensive rebounds. They've got nine. We're fortunate to be where we're at. And life so far as well has not been to the foul line in this game. White left side to Maxwell. Boomba drives him out beyond the three-point line. Maxwell, fall That's away. much better, much uh, better. You see Boomba sit down and, not, and, and hold his ground. Another good teaching point for Kyron Jones. Cower on the crossover inside. Got White up in the air and blocked away, though. Good recovery by life. LJ went with the right hand, used the left, the offhand to keep White away from it. 115 to go. Here is White looking for Maxwell down low. They're switching now with Coffey down low. The lob at the top, that's never going to work over Chris Coffey. Nope. Especially if he can get both legs underneath and go up. Kukabot doesn't want the three. Co Conway says, I'll let it fly. No good. And Coffey tapped out of bounds over to the running Eagles. Yep. Georgetown now three out of 15. Now that was the best three shot three-pointer-wise that Kof or Conway has let go. I mean, he's been under duress on a couple of those. Under a minute to play in the half, 12-point Georgetown lead. Horton spinning away from Coward. Bumped by Boomba, and he'll earn a trip to the foul line, does Cam Horton. Boomba gets called for the body check, his first foul, team's fourth. Well, here, here's the thing that happened in that situation. Cowherd let his man drive him back. He stood up and relaxed a little bit on defense. You got to stay down and keep your bigs out of foul trouble. And we're fortunate we've had four. You know, we've only had four fouls, and we need to make sure that, you know, we just we understand that you can't let guards break you down on the dribble. The second for Horton is good. Fifth point of the day for Cam Horton. 41-30, Georgetown leads 45 seconds to go in the first half. Tigers could go two for one here if they chose to go quickly. Conway inside. How do you miss him? Same way people missed Buddha last year at 6'10". They left him alone a lot. 43-30 now, four points for Boomba. Shot clock and game clock now virtually identical. <laughs> LJ just turned around and asked Horton and said, what play did you call? <laughs> if he'll answer, you know. Down well, to 10, here is Horton. And driving against Boomba, lost it, found it back. White straight away with the three, way off the mark. Conway with it with three seconds. Conway over to Coffey from midcourt. Just short. He knocked one of those down out in Kansas City a year ago. But the difference was he was on the side instead of straight on. He was. But <laughs> nevertheless, good close to the first half for Georgetown. And they go into the locker room with a double-digit lead here at halftime on Senior Day. George yes and no. We've taken a bunch of shots that were contested or a one pass and a shot. And that's not Georgetown will Good offense, stick, I don't think. stick with the original starting lineup of Kukabot, Coward, Conway, Coffey, and Boomba to begin the second half. And Life has made one change. Mike White will start the second half in place of Connor Gamble, who has picked up three first-half fouls. Pass inside, deflected out, and it will stick with Georgetown. Kukabot tried to get it down low to Conway. That was a tough pass to make over the long arm. Defender, I believe that was Libel that was guarding Kukaba at that time. Coffee hands off to Coward behind the screen. He'll let it nope. fly and not even close. And Chris Briggs saying why. Coward as of late has liked them three-point shots. He's taken a lot of them over the last few weeks and has not really been connecting at a, at a high pace. He's now one for three tonight. Hernandez working hard off that screen. Gets a second screen from Lyle. Good pass out to White. Into the corner. Coward lost Horton, and he made him pay. I'm not sure where Coward was looking that time, but Cam Horton was all alone in the corner for a three. He now has eight. Sixth three of the ballgame for life. 
And back into the zone, which they played for much of the first half. Bad pass inside from Boomba looking for Conway. Eighth Georgetown turnover. Telegraphed it. This is a life team that does not force a lot of turnovers. They, opponents turn over just 12 times a game. Maxwell over to White. Giving up size against Kukabot, and I think it played a factor on that jumper. White about, easily looking around saying, why? <laughs> White, six inches smaller. Conway, good that time from the left side. First three of the day for Conway. He now has 13. Maxwell came out, but he didn't challenge with his hands up. He had his hands down, and Conway made him pay. 46-33 on Georgetown's 4-3 of the afternoon. Good job, Roddy. Saved it into Coffee, and now to Coward. No numbers initially for Georgetown, and Coward just works it all the way through. Kukabot off to the left. Hernandez with it. Two minutes into the second half, 13-point Tiger lead. Here is Horton to the corner. White gets a look. Way too strong. Boomba with his fifth board. Came right down into Boomba's lap. Easiest rebound he's probably had ever in his career. Coward. Over to Conway now as Hernandez comes out on him. Coffee going to try and face up on Lival. Shot fake. And Coffee came up short on the dunk, but they'll say he was fouled. They're going to get Lival with... A grab of the arm. That's his second. And pretty much everybody on the bench laughing at Chris Coffey for not completing the dunk. Well, he was laughing himself sitting on his backside. Ky Kyron Jones, Jaquay Wales, Amari Tyler. Posh Posh, the one that's really letting him have it from where he's sitting. Good form, though, on the free throw for point number eight for Chris. He's still laughing and talking to the bench. See if you can get a smile out of Clareth. Doubt it. Normally with Nico, when he when between the lines are on the floor, he is all game face. He kind of reminds me with, with his game face of Tony Kimbrough. That's a good comparison. Good point. Coffee goes one of two, 47-33, two and a half into the second half. Looks like he could just bite your nose off at any point in time just because he's here is Gamble. Feels now to Horton. Boomba backed off, and Orton missed the three. Well, he's falling away, too. That, that's what I've seen life's biggest issue. Coward finishes on the drive on Horton. LJ now to double figures with 11. That's where LJ's best at. That's the biggest lead of the day, too, for Georgetown. 16-point lead. Here is Gamble working with the left hand. Got by Conway over to Libel. His three nowhere near the mark, and Boomba with another weak side rebound. Danger time for life. Coward over to Conway. Got space. Left it short, though. Horton, the only man underneath, contesting a rebound. Aiden left, though. That's why he left it short. Didn't go straight up like he did on the one previous. Gamble, moving Maxwell. screen on Maxwell. Well, Conway was trailing Gamble around, and Maxwell threw that hip out at the last second. To pick Jake a ball. He didn't like the call. But Coach Easley, as soon as the whistle blew, dropped his head because he knew exactly that the official caught it. Second foul on Antoine Maxwell. And that's also partly on Gamble for not coming directly around the screen. Conway made it from there earlier. This time, same result. Yeah, but what did he do? Straight up and down. He didn't fade either way. 19-point Georgetown lead, and now Life is trying to signal timeout. It took Horton a third try to get the notification to the official. Well, Coach Easley was trying to call the timeout, but what, what Horton did was he made a signal with his hands, but the three lower. Makes it all the more difficult. Thrown into the backcourt, and Gamble will safely get it. Damn, a nice crossover, and Conway sticking with him, though. We'll try it again, maybe. Now Maxwell. Boomba defended him well the last two times they matched up in the first half. 
Nowitzki step back there, Maxwell. Nice move. Well, you'll take that, though. That's what you want him to do. Not be going towards the rim, but falling away from it. If he hits the shot, so be it. Maxwell, the first running eagle into double figures with 11. Inside, Kukabak got all alone. Maxwell, great challenge at the rim. And little plays like that, you can get yourself back into this. Maxwell v. Boomba. Inside, Boomba going to get called for the foul coming down over the arm. Yep, didn't need to do that because Maxwell had taken himself out of a really good shooting position. He had tried to get the, he was trying to get his shoulders turned around, but he had, he was all out of whack. That would have been a difficult shot trying to shoot against his body and his momentum. And Maxwell's an excellent free throw shooter at 84%. First one is good, point 12. Alex Bean checks in. Had three first half fouls. Second one is good. He really didn't put that ball up on his, on his fingertips when he shoots that. That thing's laying yeah. flat on his palm. Some change in defensive assignment there for life. Some pressure in the backcourt. Georgetown though safely in front. I think Georgetown maybe expected that a little bit. Coward trying to drive on Hernandez, poked away. Tigers will keep it. 15 one to go in the ball game. Georgetown looking to close out the regular season at 27-2 and 14-2 and in the league. Coward. Kukabot off the curl. Knocks it down. Kukabot into double figures with 12. Cower now with six assists. Been quiet six assists, although the first three were beauties. 55-37 on Georgetown, 6-3. I think, if I'm not mistaken, four of those six have gone to Rade. I'm just this, saying. Yeah, the, the assist from LJ, you're right. They've connected well, a couple of lobs. Step back three for Maxwell. It's, oh, wow. He'll shoot three as Boomba got it, arrived late with the body contact. It's Boomba's third. Well, I, I tell you what, I thought Maxwell got about, got call that we saw back in 2016 in the national championship game. Maxwell kicked that leg out, and he's the one to make contact with Boomba. I thought Hugo did a pretty good job of challenging the shot. But. You know, we saw it go against Georgetown in that instance. This time, the offensive player gets gets the call. Sends Maxwell right back to the line. Free throw is good. This is the best case scenario for life right now, getting points with the clock stopped. Then you have your best player on the line shooting the free throws as Clareth comes in for Boomba. I thought, again, I thought it was really good defense by, by Boomba. And I thought he played. I, I he's played Maxwell pretty decently on the defense. He's gotten him off the block. He's made it tough on Maxwell to have to step out and shoot. Now, I'd much rather. If I'm Georgetown. I'd much rather have Maxwell shoot three pointers anyway. I don't know what he shoots from behind the arc. On, on the, the season, 37 percent. He does not take a lot of them though. Coming into he has he's made just 23 on the year. I'd much rather have him out there than on the block anyway. Clareth into the game. Gave him space behind the three-point line, and he just cannot find the range. Though Jacob Conway, another terrific offensive rebound, and tells L.J. Coward, come get it. Gamble, Gamble was. Shot clock did not reset yeah. on the rebound. Gamble was pleading for an over the back, but the problem was Conway had gone straight up, got in the basketball on the rebound, and Gamble was the one backing up underneath him. He's lucky he didn't get number four. Clareth now one for six from three-point range. Well, yeah, I didn't like that shot by Nico for the simple fact he just came on the floor. Get a couple of trips up and down the floor before you let one fly. He's like a that. guy that Georgetown really needs to get going heading into the postseason. I'm going to try him struggle now, though, coming in and, and going into Kansas City. Kukavat into the corner, step back with the shot clock winding down as an air ball, and it's going to be a shot clock violation over to life. As it stands right now, Last five plus games for Nico Clareth. He is now six for 34 from three point range. Well, here's the thing, too. Now, Georgetown got a little stagnant offensively. They started standing around, and that's an easy guard if you stand still. Horton left side now to Bean. 
Maxwell working against Kukabot. He'll have a strength advantage. Tried to fight his way through and draw a foul. It's deflected to Gamble. Horton over to Bean on the weak side. Blocked by Coffee at the rim. Bean gets it back. Lost it down low. Coward comes up with it. Well, he brought it down where LJ could get to it. Bullet pass to Conway. Somehow it got through, and Coffee they'll say basket interference. Oh, I'm not sure about that. They'll say that was up in the cylinder. No. Coffee doesn't argue it. I, I thought it came off. The guy who had the best look was on the far side. So wave off the bucket. That ball might have been going in anyway. I don't know how I don't know how Conway caught that pass. To be I, honest with you, I don't either. Here is Gamble. Got to help. Good switch by Kukabot. Back to Maxwell. Shot clock at 10. Deep three from Maxwell. No good. Conway. Beautiful tap to Coward. Coward has coffee on the left. Clareth on the right. Clareth doesn't take the three this time and loses it down low underneath. It'll go out of bounds off the foot of Maxwell, though. The Tigers will get it back. Well, I like the idea of Nico trying to get to the rim and be aggressive because he's not shooting the ball well right now from the perimeter. But pull up and shoot that little floater. Remember that mid marriage game I love. Conway. Not a good shot. Nope. Horton coming into the front court. The Georgetown oh. again, leaving the door open slightly for the running Eagles. Here's Hernandez. Got space off the curl and hits the elbow jumper. Jordan Hernandez. Georgetown not communicating on that little dribble handoff. Lead down to 13 at 55 42. I'd like to see a little back screen on the baseline from Georgetown and get Coffee a rim run. They're looking at it on that far side. Kukabot on the right wing, not a co- coward in the corner. Blow by on Bean, and that's four fouls on Alex Bean. That was a mismatch. Bean, when you would think, would have the advantage with the baseline there as a, as a defensive helper. Well, to do that, you have to get your rear end parallel to the floor and move your feet, and you didn't do that. Life by 13. Tigers have had a lead by as many as 19 here in the second half and just have not, not been able to break through that 20-point 20 20 plateau. Here is Coward behind the screen. Horton checks him straight away, now straight away to Clareth. Coward around Coffee, stopping at the foul line, over to Clareth in rhythm. Still short. He just cannot find the range. It's fading a little bit. He even took off the long sleeve yeah. shirt he had on during halftime and just cannot find it. Clareth now one for seven from three point range. Well, he's fading. He was fading a little bit to the left instead of going straight up and down. They get this down with a three down to 10. Maybe this guy can get it going. Just like that, Connor Gamble. First points in a long time for Gamble. He now has eight. It's well, down to an 11 point lead. They're man to man. Why are we not going? Now they're back 2 3. Coward, bad pass, intercepted by Gamble. Two on one. Stepped on the sideline, though, as he had Horton streaking to the rim. And it's little plays like that Gamble that can make a difference. Say, what did I do? And Horton says, hey, it's okay. Coach Easley. Again, it's court, called court awareness, folks. You need to understand where you're at. And Gamble just lost focus of where he was at. That's a break for Georgetown as it was two-on-one the other way off the bad pass from Coward. And nobody hustled back but Coward. That would be a point of contention with me with the coaching staff. Coward all the way. Horton and Ibel were indecisive on who should take Coward, and they decided nobody. Coward now with 13 points. Horton. Got off by Coward on the baseline to yeah. Gamble. Good closeout by Conway. Now Gamble lets it fly way short. Kukabot has his ninth board. Clareth, left side. Doesn't want the three. There you go. That's what I like. He's he's figured it out. Hey, I right now I'm I'm stone cold from behind the arc. I'll put this thing on the floor and get to the rim. Second field goal for Clareth. Five points in total. Horton. Inside, blocked by Coffey, got it back, and is fouled by Kukabot, who went up in the air off the shot fake. Kukabot's yeah. second foul. Nobody needed to leave their feet. We had 6'9 and 6'7 there, along with 6'5, and Horton goes, what, 6'1, 6'2? You sure he's 6'2? Listed at 6'2. He doesn't look 6'2 from here. I'll give him 
credit for being 6'2 then. But you got a height advantage at Georgetown, and both Kukaba and Coffee can jump out of the gym. So even at 6'2, you think Horton can get that shot off? If you stay on the floor and wait till he commits and then go up? I don't think so. Horton again goes one for two. Same story in the first half. We're approaching the midway point of the second half. Conway on the drive is fouled. I think they're going to get Maxwell. They will. Maxwell. That's his third. They're going to call him a push, but I thought, I actually thought he clotheslined him, really. He, he came down with that left hand trying to deny the shot from Conway, unfortunately. He, not, he got nowhere close to the basketball. Conway to the line. Tied with Maxwell for game high 16 points. He also has five boards, three assists. Free throw is good this time, point number 17. He's been struggling from the foul line in the last five or six games. He's not shot like we expect Jacob Conway to shoot from the line. Much better. That looks a whole lot better but again, but he was fading back from that. You see, he didn't stay there. He faded back. He has 18. The lead is 16 as we hit 10 minutes to go in the ball game. Horton, nice pass inside to Maxwell. That time, Georgetown stays down on the floor. Both of, and then they both left the floor as Maxwell committed to shoot. Kukabot over to Clareth. Working against Horton. Step back three. No. Yeah. And it's another four shot that you don't need. Georgetown now 6 of 27 from three-point range. Thrown away. Clareth. Behind the back. What a drop feed over to Conway as Clareth Look out, Richard. takes out Richard. <laughs> I couldn't tell. Did he have his feet set? No, he was moving. Block. block. <laughs> and one. That's a note there, Rex Chapman. That's a block, not a charge. Gamble. Game a little well, cover. short, Conway lets it go. Gave him a little trim around the ears, too, there just now. Richard checking his camera. We get a shot something. of Richard down there on the sideline. Taking a charge there. Real quickly. So everybody knows who we're talking about. <laughs> He's still checking the back of his head. LJ Coward out, Jaquay Wales in. Uh, one of the male jiggler is asking, hey, is your camera okay? <laughs> Richard gave him the thumbs up. That's the important question. Yeah. Conway That's posting up on Gamble. Dan will try to pull the rug out. Oh, what him. a spin. He'll go to the line as he gets fouled down low. Let's White came down to challenge. It will be four fouls now on Connor Gamble. Uh, Gamble, he, he, when, he, when Conway. There he is. Richard, There's right Richard there. right there in the orange shirt with the camera. Just to the right of uh, our cameraman down there. There you go. Taking a swig of water now. On the camera. Yes. On, the, on the camera angle yes. to the left of the cameraman. That's down correct. There. That's Richard, and he's. Probably one of the best chauffeurs we've had. One of the best photographers in this yes, sir. around the country as well. You can you see all the, all the photos that are up on GeorgetownCollegeAthletic.com. That man takes those photos. Richard Davis really seemingly at every Georgetown event. He'll be with us in Kansas City giving all the sights from Municipal Auditorium in Kansas City. 20-point lead for Georgetown now as Conway has gone over the 20-point mark. Horton. In the drive as Coffee with a volleyball spike out of bounds. Good catch over there in the front row, yeah, too. That was, that was good hands. Good awareness by that young lady uh, over Olivia, there. That's Olivia. Uh, that's Olivia Coleman over yeah, there. That's, that's right. Exactly it was. So then, now we understand why the good hands over Still there. Still got those point guard hands. Yes, sir. And that went over there like a missile in, in, in the air she caught that. That's good awareness there. Good stick to The guy to her left took a dive. He was headed for the, for the cheap seats. Might need to give right. him you, a gotta, you gotta check the scouting report. You gotta trust your point guard. Thank you very much. You gotta trust anybody. That's right. Horton hits the free throw for his tenth point. Maxwell comes out. Bean comes in. I think if anything, just to give Maxwell a breather. Horton now with 11, 65, 47, 8:45 to go. It's one of these kind of grinded out games for Georgetown. We've seen them in a couple of these this year here okay. at home. And I think of anything, if you're Georgetown, you just want to try and sustain. And Alex Bean is just gone. fouled out. 
you want to try and sustain the lead with LJ Coward on the bench and Alex Bean. That lasted five seconds. I don't think he, I don't, don't have the, the total numbers in the game, but I don't know that Bean lasted 10 minutes in this game before fouling out. And Maxwell stay on the bench. About five seconds. Not very long. And what happened was Bean just allowed Coffee to dive from the elbow right down the middle of the lane and sit down, and he just tried to mug him. Coffee in the near corner here. Let's see if Georgetown tries to set that screen for the lob. Here it yep. comes, and Conway didn't pull the trigger. It was, it was defended. Clareth comes free. Still can't get a three to go. Coffee, what a rebound on the left side. Puts it up in and one. <coughs> that was called a man rebound. A big boy rebound. He just went up, got it, and then just patiently waited. Positioned Maxwell where he wanted him, and then went up, finished through the contact, and it wasn't a thing Maxwell could do, and that's four on Maxwell now. The best rebounder in America. And that is it's showing not close, you why. Is it? Not particularly. Missed the free throw, though. And we're talking about total rebounds and rebounds per game. It's not just in one category. No. Nope. I look for Georgetown the next time down to go right at Chris Coffey and see if they can get that fifth on Maxwell. Hernandez, good closeout by Wales. He'll let it go anyway. And it's eventually pulled down by Kukabot. Right at Kukabot, 12 points, 12 boards here today on senior day. Conway in the corner. Clareth, got to get one to go down. Oh. Man. That thing was down halfway and came out. And he's now one for eight from downtown. It's all right, though. He's going to go off on somebody one day, and it's going to be huge. He's, he's too good a shooter to keep struggling. 7.30 remaining, 20-point Georgetown lead. White gets space. That one's off the mark. There's Chris Coffey's 19th double-double of the season. The other side, Conway. Three for three from that same spot. He has 25 off the rebound from Chris Coffey. I'd have to think at this point, Darren, that Chris Coffey is your Mid-South Conference Player of the Year. Ooh, ow. That was a screen for Maxwell. Hold on, I got I to check my feelings real quick. Yeah, Hernandez hits a three to answer. Yeah, LJ, or excuse me, that was Wales that got blistered by a, a screen from Maxwell. 70 to 50, Clareth. We're going to lie, but you can tell he's just dying to let one go. But he's look, he just does here. not have the confidence. Chris, Co nope. Chris oh. Briggs says let it go. Snap it off. 17-footer can't go. And I would much, if you're Chris Briggs and if you're Nico Claire, you'd much rather struggle right now until we get to Kansas City. And I just have a feeling just, that it's going to happen to somebody. Oh, man. Oh, how did Roddy miss that pass? Maxwell drew Roddy Cook about in the air and drew the third foul there. Fe feels like with Nico Claire. He's going to have one of those games either in the conference tournament or in the national tournament where he's going to go off for like an angry 40 points. Because he's be been a loud 40. Because he's been struggling so mightily yeah. from the field the well, last few if weeks. If you're anybody in the country and you potentially are an opponent for Georgetown come the NAIA national tournament, whether it be game one or game two, you don't want to see 24 show up and have been struggle leading into Kansas City because he could go off in game one. LJ Coward checks back in for Jaquay Wales, and Wales did exactly what you wanted him to do, just maintain where you're at with Coward on the bench. Well, I will say this for Nico. Those are shots that are not. Mike White with Olay defense. Yeah. Conway now with 27. That's, look out. That's called a lookout block on the football field from an offensive lineman. That's right. Here's White. 72-51. Still six minutes to go here at Davis Reed Alumni Jim Maxwell. Pull up from 15, nicely done. There's a lot to like about his game. Yeah. Ma Antoine Maxwell, 19 points, five rebounds tonight. What grade is he? What year is he? He's a senior. Okay. He doesn't look like a senior. He's, he's in the face. He looks, oh, he called Coffee a gets called screen. for a moving screen. First foul of the day on Chris Coffey, the team's sixth. Chris Briggs immediately started barking about it. Uh, if you look at Maxwell's face, he doesn't look old enough to be a senior. In his face. I mean, he looks young. He's had a nice career. 
at various stops and had a nice season this year. Or Mark Reed checking in for the first time for life, wearing 22. He's about to inbound the ball. Senior from Atlanta. This is just his 11th game on the season. Yeah, he won't be hard to spot. He's got the, the dual pigtails. Lareth poked it away. Can he keep it in bounds? No. Yeah, he's 20, 22 in, in green, is, and you, he's got the dual pigtails there. I assume that's what those are called. I'd like to see that play there from Clareth, though. As much as he's been struggling, not just today, the last few weeks, nice pass inside from Horton to Hernandez for the lay-in. But the fact that Clareth is still hustling and trying to knock balls well, away just like that. And that's, 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 that's I think, the Nico Clareth that Georgetown needs. Whether he's scoring or not, I want him seeing engaged on the defensive end. I don't want to see it affecting his, his play on the defensive end. Coward splits a trap and finishes with the left hand. He has 15. 74, 55, 5, 10 to go. That was a much better drive from LJ. Straight away, Libel's three, no good. Eris Clara skying for the board. Just effortless when he rises up. Step back, three. Still cannot get one to go. It's all right, though. He is one for ten from downtown tonight. Just keep playing. And Georgetown is a team seven out of 30. Now, I don't like the fact we've taken 33. More than half of the field goal attempts have been three-pointers today for the Tigers. Horton will try three, and the bank is open on the weekends here in Georgetown, Kentucky. Second time he's banked one in. <laughs> 74-58, so still time here for life, but you've got to start putting some stops and scores together. Coward working against Reed. Crossover and just undressed Reed, but missed the lay and Great recovery by Reed. Yeah, LJ got a little fancy with the... White through the lane, fouled by Kukabot. That is Rade Kukabot's fourth foul, team seventh. Well, LJ got a little, I don't want to say lazy, but a little nonchalant with his finish there. Instead of going strong and finishing and putting it up on the glass, he just kind of flipped it up there. You don't, you know, you need to finish strong. White now point number six, his first point of the half. Two for two for Mike White. Boomba coming in for Rade. Kukabot heads out, 12 points, 12 rebounds. Don't know if it'll be for the final time. I think yeah. he can maybe get one more run at it. And you still have Maxwell on the bench for life. Even more so, you'd like to see Georgetown drive it and work inside. You've got Boomba working against Horton instead. Conway buries another three from that left side. He now has 30. Well, it's that same area that he's hit four threes, my ear. His second 30-point game of the season. White with a nice turnaround jumper. That's a tough shot on a fall away, but LJ had his hands down. Clareth working against Reed. Ooh. Crossed him over. Over to Boomba. Boomba inside on Reed. Lays it in. I will say this. Boomba can be this year's Dominique Reed. He really can. Absolutely. Give you that guy that strength down low. You're going to go either way. And you're going to need that out in Kansas City from time to time. Yes. 79-62. Horton will try another one. Well, Gets the bounce. Wow. Horton now with 17. He's blocked two, or he's banked two in. This one hit high off the heel. Coward inside will go to the line. He is fouled on the drive, I believe, by Horton. Well, take your pick. There was three of them there, and they that, got Horton. That's Horton. It's just his first yeah. and the team's eighth. There was three of them there, and they all three took a swipe at him and didn't see the, which one that got a hold of him, but they said Horton was the one. L.J. Cowherd hits the free throw. Point number 16 in his Davis Reed alumni, Jim Swansong. He has seven assists today. Which puts him 15 away from correct. 6.55 for the career. Second free throw rolls out. Reed has the board. That thing was halfway down. He came out of there. Well, that happens to him, but then on this side, Horton uses every ounce of glass and rim to bank to bounce in a three. 
How does that work? I don't know. Ooh. Campbell stop and pop from 15. Good. Boy, I like his game. Timeout by Elias. It's, there's some pieces here for life. They've just not been able to put it together consistently on the offensive end. Well, at times, I think they fall in love. For one Georgetown and top 15 ranked Cumberlands. In two places that have been tough for Campbellsville to win in. Absolutely. The last 10 years or so. We're back to action here, though. Georgetown will worry about that a week from today in and the Mid-South a, Conference Tournament a, in Bowling Green. Now it's a 13-point lead. Conway again. And he's screaming at the bench, get me the ball. He has 33. It's two off of a career high. Horton to try to answer. Floater no good. Boomba had it knocked away, and he wound up touching it last. Life will get it back. Horton looks like he may be shaking up. He wanted, Horton wanted a foul call, and the official said there was no contact. You took off way away from the rim and didn't realize how far away from it he was. Five will try three. No good. Boomba eventually, eventually gets his seventh rebound. Yeah. 83-67. Conway, heat that's check. a heat check all day long. Too strong. And eventually fumbled out of bounds between White and Reed back to Georgetown. Conway better high five his teammate Boomba for getting that possession back. That was a serious heat check from from Jacob. Conway's career high is 35 set two years ago. That was against Simmons, wasn't it? Ohio Chillicothe. Okay. He's had a couple big ones against Simmons. A lob. Coffee couldn't catch it because he was fouled down low going up for it. Yep, Gamble's done. He Gamble knew he did it. He, he doesn't agree with the call, but that, that was an easy call. They they had knew that that lob play was coming eventually, and Gamble just reached and grabbed him as, as Coffee elevated. Zach Stewart will check in now. Freshman from Ocala, Florida. Just his 18th game of the year. He averages only five minutes a night. Coffee at the free throw line. Now four for nine tonight. Boomba tapped it out to Coffee. Hey, Boomba has some good tape from this performance today. To Clareth Ooh. on white. Step back and finally got one to oh. go. Oh, The crossover the between the legs and then a step back with it. Oh, that's called an ankle breaker. I'd be in traction for six months. And now trying to poke the ball away with an 18-point lead with a minute 15 to go. Boomba with the block inside. Conway had it knocked away. Here is Reed down the lane. That's poked away by Coffee up ahead. Co Coward to clear it to Coffee. Okay, it wasn't supposed to work like that. The pass was off the mark for Clareth, and Coffee cleans it up. Yeah, but I think Nico also felt Coffee coming and maybe tapped it straight up in the air so Coffee could go get it. I don't know if it was planned, but it sure as heck looked like I it. I don't think that was planned at all. Clareth couldn't get it, and Coffee was following it up. Oh. Wow. Good night, everybody. If that's not a way that to close one? out senior day. Oh. Well, I'm watching Nico, and I'm... Just by his body language, I'm not sure he didn't he didn't feel that he couldn't get it. So I'm going to get a hand on it and knock it up and let Chris go get it. Oh, not sure. We'll ask Nico after the game. How about that? 20 point lead with 50 seconds left. And one thing I've know, known with talking with Nico here recently, he is a straight up honest guy. He'll tell you. <laughs> Three off the mark, pulled down by Kevin Worth inside, getting some last minute action. Conway has the board, his sixth. Georgetown won't have to shoot the ball unless they want to. They may. Yeah, it's about a seven-second differential. Yeah. They'll have to give it up. Well, they, they may give up a, a shot clock violation. And it looks like Chris Briggs will leave these seniors on the floor to finish it out. He's got five of his six seniors on the floor. Yeah, the only one not on the floor is Kukabot. Oh, I thought Conway was going to launch it. Instead, he launched a pass out of bounds. And Boomba said, okay, yeah. Conway said, roll to the bucket. Once you got, got him held up, what? here comes Omari. Chris Coffey out for the final time. I said it before, Darren, is he has to be the Mid-South Conference Player of the Year, is he not? Is there anybody close? Uh, maybe his teammate, LJ Coward, who comes out for the final time. And maybe the Tyler kid from, uh, is, it, is it Tyler, right, the kid from Cumberland's? Uh, Allison, maybe. Yeah. LJ Coward is done at Davis Reed Alumni Gym.
Two of the greatest to ever put on a Tiger uniform. And here comes Jacob Conway out. I'll say it again, DeAndre McWhorter. That's the greatest recruiting class in Georgetown College history. And DeAndre, I'm telling you, he's telling you why you're thousands of miles away. I'll say it here when you're back here to watch action <laughs> next year. Yeah, 20 a, point lead here in the waning seconds. In a moving car, that doesn't count. <laughs> Kevin Worth blocked by Kukabot. And eventually, that's it. Georgetown with an 87 67 win. The Tigers finished the regular season 27 2.